Welcome back to News Station News. I'm reporter Judgy Pants, and tonight I will be discussing dams with a special guest, Jeff Lugenberger. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. I just love talking about dams. All right, so let's get right into this. Do you think that we should remove the dams along the Columbia River? Uh, heck no. Those dams are vital for the Columbia Basin economy. Washington farmers in the Columbia Basin produce 20% of the nation's potatoes and 71% of the United States' apples. That is a lot. None of that would be possible without the Columbia River and its dams. Okay, alright, but what about sustainability? There's no way it's that sustainable. I mean, almost all suitable locations for dams have already been dammed. That is true, but it doesn't help your case. Dams can continue to operate for hundreds of years if properly managed. But also, on the topic of managing them, they are very cheap compared to other energy generators. That can't be right. They're so huge. They can cost upwards of $30 billion. That is an outlier. Most dams only cost 51 to $209 million. But you're still right. Dams cost way more than other energy power production sources. Aha. But... They are much cheaper to operate and maintain than other power sources. And adding on top of that, they are a lot more uh, efficient and produce no waste whatsoever. Well, just because they produce no waste doesn't mean that they're completely green. Whenever a new dam is put in place, it can be devastating to local wildlife, especially salmon. You're right, and that is probably the biggest drawback for dams. There have been steps put in place to try and help the salmon as much as possible, one of them being the salmon fish ladders. They can actually be easier for fish to climb up than some bigger waterfalls, but the dams still hurt the fish population. See? We can't leave these dams in place when they're hurting fish like that, and the fish ladders just aren't natural. We need to keep it natural and save the fish. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Whenever a dam fails, it is always catastrophic. Okay, first of all, they almost never happen, so. but when they do, they usually happen in other countries. But everything has dangers. The only type of power production source that I don't think has killed anyone is solar energy farms. Well, and wind farms are super nice, because they can control how much energy their turbines are providing. So they can get exactly how much power they need. Yeah, so can dams. They can also create thousands of job opportunities during and afterwards construction. Well, darn. Let's just move on to Bill Burgerhead, an expert on dams, to give us a quick rundown on how they work. Bill? Thanks, JG Pants. Had to deal with a few rogue Martians there. Oh, also, by the way, uh, sorry about you losing your uh, lawyer job. That really was a shame. Yeah, I know. So, you see this? This is a cell phone. It requires electricity. And how do you get a lot of electricity? I'm glad you asked. If you said plug the phone in, you would be correct. But how does the electrical outlet get electricity? The, the answer is that if you live in Washington state, there's a 68% chance that it comes from a dam. Dams create electricity by harnessing the potential energy of waterfalls and large rapids. First, the water enters long tubes called penstocks. The penstocks tilt downward to give the water momentum for when it hits the turbines. The turbines are blades that when the water pushes them, they spin around. At the top, they are connected with a shaft that is also connected to a generator, and they rotate with each other. The generator uses the mechanical energy that the rotating turbines transfers to it and turns it into electrical energy. After that, the generator transfers the electrical energy uh, to uh, through transformers uh, and then to the national grid and then it goes straight to your house where it goes into one of your electrical outlets wow all right i didn't know that before probably because i don't care anyways thank you so much for watching news station news and i hope you maybe learned a thing or two i'd like to thank bill burgerhead and jeff flugenberger for coming out here today and talking with us about dams it was fun My pleasure. There we go. It was a time of great war in the Plastic Kingdom.
General McFlurry led an attack against a known enemy encampment along the bank of the Columbia River. Although he soon realized they were outnumbered. General McFlurry called for reinforcements from Captain Jenkins. Captain Jenkins and his men fought several small skirmishes along the way, delaying them even more. In their rush to aid General McFlurry, they fell right into an ambush set by the whites. Soon enough, their jeep was blown up and they were trapped. Not good.